I'm at a gypsy. We treat a few forearm pumps, you know. That are, I was going to actually ask you about that. So what? what is, if, if we could uh, yeah, paint the picture of like what's going on there, what that surgery is aiming to do and like how effective that is because that's uh, obviously one of the more common, uh, I guess, themes to deal with in motocross is riders getting arm pumps. So what exactly yeah. is going on there? Well, look, arm pump's really common. Like, uh, and I think anybody that rides for long enough probably gets it, <laughs> you know. So um, what what's happening is that it's, it's a normal process when you're um, using your forearm muscles for that period of time or any, any of your muscles to get some swelling in the compartment. So you get increased fluid in there. Now, the, the problem with that is that uh, your compartment, your muscles within your leg or your arm or anyway, are covered by a fascia. So it's almost like a sausage skin yep. around the outside of them. And that helps them function better and contract harder and all those sorts of things. Um, but it, it's, it's like a sausage skin. And if you keep pushing fluid in, you can actually get to a point where um, the blood vessels can't pump through it. So, you, so you're actually getting enough pressure in there that it's stopping blood flow. Yeah, okay. And and the guys that are getting to that stage where they're, you know, cramping up and they can't move their hand, you know, they it's usually very reproducible too. Like the guys that get really good good going forearm pump will say, um, and especially when you see the super bike riders, that they'll say, on that circuit it comes on on lap four. Mm. They can tell you exactly when it's gonna happen. And they say I'm, I'm I'll be winning or I'll be coming top five. And I hit lap four. I cramp, you know, cramp up. I can't really move anything. My forearms go rock hard, and and I can't ride anymore. And I drop back through the field, and I end up dead last, or whatever it might be. Yeah. And they and they can tell you where it happens. They they can almost point to the corner usually and say it happens there on lap five, because they know how long it takes to build up that pressure mm. in their compartment. So uh, the compartment's like a sealed unit. And if you keep accumulating fluid in there, eventually you get so much pressure that you you can't actually uh, pump through there so people get a thing called an acute compartment syndrome so the classic that's when you fracture a tibia yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the bleeding into the compartment does the same thing and so that becomes a bit of an emergency you've got to get to theater and release the pressure in the compartments or that's or, a crazy surgery eh? oh yeah yeah and it's um because you, you, your muscles aren't getting any oxygen so they're going to die so yeah. you have to open the compartment up and give them room to swell so the blood vessels can you know supply enough oxygen that they survive so you usually end up with big cuts on both sides of your leg and opening up all the compartments and letting the muscles just bulge out and then over a period of a few days or a week you, you slowly close those wounds as the pressure comes down you might have to go back to theater a few times and you slowly bring them together sometimes we even bootlace them so you you'll put staples down either side of the wound and and um run like an elastic band backwards and forwards so it's like a crisscross bootlace yeah and each time you go back you pull the bootlace and squeeze it together a bit further and then you do it a bit further and then eventually the skin will come together if it doesn't you might have to graft it but most of them come back together so that's for an acute compartment syndrome um is there any when you so the fascia yeah then is not getting joined back together or no, what, what you, happens to you, the fascia? You, you let it go and sometimes your muscles will bulge out and look a bit the contour of your leg might look slightly different or yeah. um, you, you don't generally repair that because it'll be too tight basically yeah. you go so what for like trying pump to put is, an Ikea thing back in the box once you've taken it all out you'll just never get it back in there pretty or much. a swag like pretty the much. swag you know when you buy a swag and you pull the thing it's never going back in there <laughs> <the way. laughs> much the same so um, what forearm pump is a, is, a, is a chronic version of that. So what you're doing is you're riding until you're getting enough swelling in the compartment that it, it stops uh, it stops the inflow of blood and the oxygen and say so you're actually getting ischemia in that compartment. But that's when you cramp up and you can't ride anymore and the race finishes. And, you, and then and it then goes you, back down And then slowly. You, you go and see your team, they start to milk it out and then, and then it, it recovers, you know, and so hopefully you get right for the next race. Um, so it's a chronic version of that the difference is that you don't have uncontrolled bleeding into it so once yeah. you stop exercising yeah. it you can get rid of the fluid so it's just and basically the same thing as when you have it's the, the same thing yeah. it's just a gentler version of it that you well, yeah. that you it's can control yeah yeah, yeah. yeah um i've actually um taken the uh there's a pressure monitor that you can poke into the compartment measure what the pressure is really and um i actually took it to the track one day for a couple of guys that had bad forearm pump and i said as soon as you finish the race 
come into race safe and we'll stick it in. And we measured their pressures. They were huge. What kind of pressures are you talking about? Oh, sort of 40 millimetres of mercury, which is about the the point where with an acute compartment syndrome, you think it's time to go to theatre and release it. So they're actually getting those sort of pressures. Um, Difference is they can stop it and then then milk it out. What's like a resting pressure? Oh, almost nothing, like a couple of millimetres, yeah. Wow. So it's... um, you know, they're getting big pressures in their form. They come in, and you, yours are probably the same when you ride. They're rock hard. Like yeah. your forearm goes hard. Yeah. And if you put a needle in or if you, at that point where you're not getting blood flow, well, the pressure's high enough in there that it's stopping enough blood flowing in. So it's a decent pressure. You'd be up around 30 or 40. So um, at that point, that's when you can't hang on anymore. Well, you then stop. you stop, yeah. You stop, and the process stops, and you, you try to get them right, and, and away you go again. Well... That obviously, if it's if it's happening on lap five every time you go around, well, you, you're not going to be competitive. So, yeah. so that's when you try and manage them. It's obviously and much better if you can manage it than to have surgery. And and I usually say to patients, look, what are you trying? Are you you know doing massage and all those sorts of things? Um, you, you've got to try um, to probably relax on as much as you can on the bars. You know, you see guys lined up for the start. And they're gripping the handlebars as tight as they can, yeah. and they they don't blink, and they yeah, you know yeah. you've seen the guys yeah, you know yeah, yeah. and and uh, that's probably not conducive to looking after your your forearm pressures. Yeah, you got to relax and have them on the. It's easier said than done. I'm not a racer. But, yeah, you know, yeah. But that's why I say to them, I say you, when you can relax, you got to relax and not not be gripping the bars like you're trying to squeeze the you know the rubber off the end of the handlebars or you know so you've got to try and relax as much as you can when you can because there's times when you can't yeah and and look after them and look if if they go through all that and they're doing the massage and 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 it's not holding them and they can't race with it well then we talk to them about surgery essentially the surgery is to split the sausage skin and it's like no different to the sausage on the barbecue if it splits along well, if you run a knife along the top of it, all the all the sausage meat bul- bulges out through the through the split. That's essentially what we do to your forearm. So we we um, so, you know small skin incision, but then elevate the skin, the fat off the fascia, make sure we're safe, and then and then split the fascia all the way down, and so the muscles can bulge out through there. And, and look, most of the guys we do it on notice a, a big difference early. You know, the first couple of races, they go, this is fantastic. Um, and then they're pretty good for a few seasons, but they often, if you see them later, they say uh, eventually the symptoms come back again. And that's because oh, really? your body just fills that in with scar. And, and the scar is probably even less pliable than the, than the fascia. Than the fascia. So um, I, I warn all the patients that have it done, they will probably get the symptoms back at some stage. Yeah. Um, and, and I think most of them do. So it's not a permanent cure, unfortunately, but yeah. uh, it does help. Like it certainly most of the riders that have it done notice like the next week when they ride they feel great yeah because you can basically ride straight away yeah, after yeah. it. yeah the one thing i do tell them though is it's not going to stop the swelling the swelling is normal yeah it just stops the pressure build up so yeah. you'll still come off your uh, your forearms will still be swollen Rock and hard. Big. they're just not they're in not, a case they're just not in a sausage case so mm. they, they'll they'll be squishy and you know you've got to get in and you've still got to manage them you've still got to milk them out and you've got to get rid of the fluid out of your forearms and before you go out and ride again they just don't get that ischemic cramp up mm. mid-race if you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.